What's going on guys, this is Michael MGF, and today I'm only doing my Thor Ragnarok showcase, and for this video, I've got the God of Thunder himself, Thor, Gladiator Hulk, Loki, Valkyrie, and the Goddess of Death, Hela. So, why is this video hella late? Well, I did an entire video explaining just that, and I'll put like a card or something right here, and you can totally check that out if you care. But I've been working on these figures for the past couple of months now, on and off work, while also working on some Justice League figures in between, and it's definitely come with a few challenges with making these. Hulk was so unbelievably time consuming. My first big fig to ever have this much detail and uh, it just took so much work and we'll get into all of that right now. Okay so we've got Thor first up of course and this figure definitely came with a few obstacles but it wasn't like this figure was you know full of things that I haven't done before but it was more so just figuring out the outfit because what I wanted to do was basically make his outfit like his gladiator armor but not really I kind of wanted because I figured the gladiator scene was going to be you know one of the first you know the first act brief sequence and then he was going to lose most of you know what he had on Sakaar and so I decided that I would do like his third act outfit but I didn't realize that he loses the knee pad halfway through and I had already painted it and I didn't realize that he stops using these swords so I basically have gladiator Thor which was not necessarily what I was going for but that that's still okay because this is still the costume I wanted to make. I just didn't realize that he was going to be dropping so much of the accessories I had already implemented onto the figure. So basically what I ended up doing was making Gladiator Thor and uh, that's just kind of what happened. So um, yeah, that's a thing. But anyway, so I used the standard Thor face from the Lego sets. Always, you know, this is a great likeness, Chris Evans. I repainted the beard and the eyebrows. I basically repainted everything on it except for the pupils, actually. I even uh, painted over the eyes. But the hair piece is a standard sleeping hairpiece. However, I did uh, do a lot of modifying to it. You know, I sanded the sides, obviously, but I also did a lot of work on the top to really bring down that volume and make it look a lot closer to Chris Hemsworth hairstyle. And I honestly didn't really see any other options to uh, pull that off. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out, though. Definitely better than uh, past attempts I have done before. Um, so anyway, just to get them out of the way, the swords, these big blue swords, I could not figure out how to make these for quite a while before. Finally, I'm I'm standing in a Michael's Arts and Crafts store and I'm like, hey, looking at like these gift cards they have on the counter, I'm like, hey man, I can totally cut one of those up and make Thor's sword. So I got a couple katana pieces, some gold ones off of Bricklink. I chopped the blades off. I, uh, you know, figured out the design for the actual swords, got the outline on the cards, cut them out, and then painted everything you see on them. Obviously, I had to glue and seal them onto the hilts, which is definitely a challenge in and of itself because of, you know, how much work it takes to make sure that such a thin piece stays completely secured onto, you know, another. Because, you know, as I'm sure a lot of you guys know, uh, glue just doesn't always do it. Sometimes you have to take extra measures to ensure that something will not inevitably break off. So, all of that said, as I try to uh, remove the hand from the hilt, you can tell I'm still being careful because, uh, I mean, I secured them on pretty well, but uh, I don't know, man. It just I just like to still, you know, play it safe, but I'm really happy the way they turned out. All the detail on these swords took quite a while to paint, man. An entire day's worth of work. But anyway, so, the rest of the figure. Torso, 3D elements. You can see it's all there, all the detail, the painted uh, red markings. Everything is on there. My own gunmetal color used here, and also the shoulder armor, like the shoulder piece on his left arm, that is fully sculpted, and then I also did add a 3D element on top of it to add, you know, for a little bit more depth, and that's fully painted. The entire figure is fully painted for, for the most part, and then also you'll notice that the muscle arms are actually printed Eclipse Graphics muscle arms. They're fantastic arms, and the, you know, the design that Victor has on these has always been great, and I've always used them on Thor minifigures, or at least as far back as Age of Ultron, and this was my last pair, so I might be painting the next design on for Infinity. Anymore. I don't know. Anyway, the cape was from a standard Lego. Actually, it was a Cape Madness cape, but, you know, based off of Lego's design. And I pretty much then just cut down the entire thing. And I, I went through a few of uh, Cape Madness's red capes because I did not get it right at first. It's definitely an interesting cape to implement onto a Lego minifigure. And so if I remove the torso, you can pretty much see how this works. You have the red cape and it's all cut and trimmed to size. However, there is one little tab and that is the tab that rests in between the torso 
and the actual, uh, you know, belt piece from the pair of legs. So it goes over the neck post on the torso, obviously, but then this little piece of fabric rests right on top of the waist cape and then it secures itself in place with the torso on top of it. And that's how I keep that cape in place. And I think it worked out really well. Anyway, the waist cape is also more modified uh, Cape Madness accessories. However, this time, you know, I, I trimmed them down to size and I fully painted this one in my own gunmetal color, just like the torso, for instance. And then I have all the red designs running on there. And then another custom Cape Madness accessory right there as well. And that is also completely trimmed down to size to be accurate with the fabric and, you know, the uh, waist capes that Thor sports in Thor Ragnarok. And then, uh, pretty self-explanatory, the, the knee pad is fully painted. And I'm really happy with the way that turned out, getting that design onto a blocky leg, not a easy thing to do. And I'm also really happy the way the straps turned out. Now they seamlessly wrap around the minifigure's leg as well. So that pretty much does it for Thor. So now this is the part where I stall because I also prepared an alternative head for this minifigure, even though I really wasn't trying to make gladiator armor necessarily. I, I That's pretty much exactly what I ended up doing. Um, and so I did end up making the helmet. And as I try to get the little tab secured in place, these are, these are things that I usually wouldn't do during a video. I might even cut this out or I'll probably just forget. Um, you can see I've got the figure together now and here we go alternative head with the helmet there it is and it's uh it's a thing took lego's helmet fully painted it and uh, added some shades here and there on the like the teal sections but other than that it's uh, pretty straightforward and i'm really happy the way this figure turned out so there he is thor and by the way spoilers for thor ragnarok why didn't he do the eye patch what, what why 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 isn't there like a bloodied eye uh well because i'm gonna wait until infinity war to do that so before you drop any comments, this is a Thor Ragnarok showcase and not, uh, you know, an Infinity War showcase. So here we go with the big guy, Gladiator Hulk. Oh my God, this was so time consuming. The amount of work that it takes to properly pull off a big fig with this level of detail is insane. And I was so glad to have finally finished him because this is almost like four or five figures in one. That is what the workload is like to put it into perspective. And so it is just an insane amount of work, but a lot of this really is self-explanatory. Of course, you can see all the obvious 3D elements, the waist armor I sculpted, the custom weapons, but really the majority of the work was just all paint. And so, you know, you take a look at the original Gladiator Hulk big fig that LEGO provides in the sets that I started out with, and it's very easy to see how much it took to get from point A to point B. Now, with that said, you can see all the 3D elements like the straps that run all, you know, all around his torso, his upper body. You have all of the, uh, the straps that connect to his knee armor and all of the straps on his sandals and everything that was individually cut and applied before, you know, uh, all the paintwork and detail that went on to each piece individually, all the lines that are on, you know, various sides of his sandals, you know, the weathering effect that I have running all throughout his skin to, you know, make it look a little bit more nitty gritty and realistic to Hulk's actual skin um, in the movie. And I did the same thing for like the Hulk I did way back for Avengers Age of Ultron. So very similar effect, just pulled off a little bit better here. Um, and you can see the gauntlet with all the detail that I have painted on here, this little sculpted piece, it's, it's all there and not entirely accurate. That is the thing. This figure is not entirely accurate. This arm is not entirely accurate because I decided instead of because basically like with, with this arm here his left arm there's supposed to be more exposed skin and a bit more armor but Lego made this entirely new piece with all these armor plates and you have an, a really good you know fantastic shoulder that is mostly accurate to the real thing that I decided instead of basically starting from square one I would make the most of what I had with this piece and so in that effort I did sculpt a second set of spikes here you know I highlighted all of the uh, you know individual sections of the armor by painting lines over each and I do have I did fill in like the insides of both arms and then paint over that and you can see those gaps filled in there and there um, and then the weapons you can see I started off with Legos 
um, I think this, this this is like uh, Hulk's like uh, Warhammer, and it's really cool. And I decided Lego with their brick built one, they actually got pretty close. And so I basically just took it the extra mile. I filled in the bottom with Procreate. I did the same for the top, and then I added some more elements such as the bars on the top. I filled in the uh, areas right here in between the brick and uh, like the modified plate. All of it glued together, all fully painted with these like triangular details on both sides. That was time consuming. I mean, just everything on this big fig is self-explanatory and you can see what I did, but it all just took so much time to pull off the uh, battle axe, all fully painted. Of course, I actually made uh, the two blades, like the two halves of it out of styrene and that was my first time using that. So that was definitely pretty cool um, and making sure that these two pieces were really hardcore, like locked onto this, you know, Lego rod and connector piece that they're glued into. And, you know, all of these things combined that just made for such a long process to get this right and it's still not entirely accurate. I don't even think the Hot Toys figure is entirely accurate because that's what I base most of this figure off of. But then you go and watch the movie and there, there's even more detail than what you see on that collectible figure that is being pushed, you know, to retail. And so anyway, um, that is mostly it. It's fully repainted. I did my best with, you know, by working with what Lego had as a base standard. I love the helmet. His left arm wasn't entirely accurate, but like I said, I think I did what I could. And then I painted on all the tattoos and all the respective detail, the sculpted waist armor, the sandals were so time consuming and this entire big fig, I'm so, so happy with the end result. And it, it almost sounds like this was more of a chore the way I've been talking about it. And I get that, but uh, it was still, you know, ultimately very satisfying to finally be done and to have one hell of a Gladiator Hulk big fig that I can be really proud of. So yeah, the big draw to this showcase, my, my first ever big fig that, you know, has this level of detail, you know, Age of Ultron, Hulk, the thing from Fantastic Four and, and uh, Doomsday definitely cannot compare to what it took to pull this off. But uh, there you go, guys, Gladiator Hulk. And thankfully for Infinity War, it'll be a bit more simple. Next up, the Hiddles himself, Loki, this figure. Man, I have always wanted to make a Loki ever since, like... The first Avengers, I, I skipped Thor The Dark World, I mean, for, for good reason, and then I finally got to make him for this movie, and I think it turned out pretty great. This figure, pretty self-explanatory for the most part, you know, he has the full paint job, um, you know, the costume is as accurate as I could get it. I really didn't have a lot of reference for the sides of his legs, but other than that, I think I came fairly close. 3D elements for his shoulder armor, for the uh, bits that wrap around his wrists, tiny tactical glove tops, don't say a word, um, but also I do have a pair of Brick Forge, uh, I, I forget which daggers these are. I literally just wrote it in the description for the Flickr post, but I, I, I instantly forgot. Either way, I ordered a pair of these, and then I trimmed down the uh, like the wrist guards a bit, and then I also did cut sections out of the tops of each blade, and then obviously painted everything you see on them, the blue, the silver, all of it, and uh, those turned out pretty great. And they're not, they're not big enough to where I need to pull them out of the shot, so that's also great too. Um, anyway, I do have the detail painted onto both hands as well well, which I definitely think helps to top off the minifigure. Fully painted torso, the legs, everything is there. Wrapping around all four sides of both pairs of legs, or both legs, there's only one pair, but anyway, the actual face itself is from the Lego set, of course, because, I mean, this face, similar to Yondu with Guardians 2, this face really grew on me. At first, I'm always kind of iffy, um, but this, I think, is definitely a really, really close likeness to Tom Hiddleston, and so I decided to carry it over onto my minifigure. Now, the number one challenge that I absolutely did not want to avoid and I wanted to tackle head-on was the big, obvious modification that I made to Lego's helmet. Now this was definitely a challenge for sure because what I had to do to pull this off was basically cut out the entire top of the helmet with a razor and then do the same thing to the back of the helmet without cutting too much or making the mod you know too messy and so it was definitely tedious because then what I did was take a basic Wonder Woman hairpiece and not Gal Gadot Wonder Woman but an actual like Lego you know like a regular DC superhero 
Mysterio's Wonder Woman hairpiece, and then I took two of those, destroyed one of them to get the top piece, and I basically sanded the crap out of it until it would fit into the, the hole that I cut in the top of the helmet, and even then I sanded a little bit too much and I had to fill in part of this with Procreate and uh, then sculpt over. It was a whole thing, um, but then I had to destroy yet another hairpiece, and the second one was obviously for the back, and I had to sand that part down to size and, and then glue it into uh, the back of the helmet, and it, it ended up being a very tedious mod that I really did not think was going to work but it totally did and I'm so so happy with it all the sanding and uh, the all the sanding that went into it and the precise cutting paid off and I think I came out the other end with one hell of a custom Loki minifigure that I'm pretty proud of and it looks like he's gonna have the same costume in Infinity War so maybe I can get away with just making like a hairpiece or something if he's not gonna have the helmet that's not relevant here's the figure and uh, yeah that's it the second to last minifigure value Valkyrie, oh man, why did he make this costume? She only wore it for the third act of the movie and Basically, man, it just boiled down to, I thought this costume was cooler than her scavenger outfit. I mean, the, the shades of metallic white blending with gray and, and all the gold armor plating. I just thought this was so, so much cooler. And I decided, hey, I mean, she'll probably end up wearing this in Infinity War, maybe a future installment, and I, and I won't have to make it again if I do it now. I'm So I, I play the long game. Um, that's not relevant. But what is, is I had to improvise for the hairpiece on this minifigure to start. And I didn't, I, I couldn't get my hands on another Christo Captain Marvel hairpiece. And if you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I use that on Black Widow for Civil War. Um, so what I ended up doing was taking this hairpiece. You can probably recognize which one it is at this point. Usually it has two more sections of hair coming down on the front. But once I cut those off and sanded away what remained of them, I uh, smoothed it over with paint and then painted the entire hairpiece in dark brown. And it worked out really, really well. But initially, I had a completely different face for Valkyrie. I had initially, I had I'd taken a Lego's Valkyrie hairpiece, or their hairpiece? Lego's Valkyrie face. And then... I tried to remove the tattoos and I, I successfully did so, but then I also tried to, you know, like do my own paint job over Lego's printing because it was kind of faded and, and then I, I was like, you know, th this has the wrong skin tone to begin with anyway. So I'm on, I'm on Instagram's explore feed or my Instagram explore feed and I, I'm looking around and then I just, I come across this Freemaker Adventures character and for one, I'm like, does anybody actually watch that crap? But secondly, I was like, hey, that face looks like Tessa Thompson and way better than anything I'm working on. So then I was like, hey, random Bricklink seller had one of those guys send one over. And then I was like, man, this just made my custom minifigure 10 times better. And I'm super happy with the decision. I think it absolutely accounts for so much of what makes this minifigure complete. And so... Other than that, you can see the sword is actually a Brick Forge, and hey, I actually pulled up the name this time, a Brick Forge Gladius sword that I modified by kind of like trimming it up to a point here and shortening it a bit by doing so and then painting the blade in the metallic light blue that you see. And for whatever reason, I had to do that like four times because each time I would, I, I, I kept touching it before it was dry and I kept making that amateur mistake and I, I, I don't know why, but it, it, it was an unnecessary amount of work to get that blue, uh, metallic blue on that blade. Anyway, uh, you don't need to know that, but what you do need to know is I used an area light curved torso, and so that was pretty cool. It's not like I've done that a hundred times at this point, but I did paint everything I could because there was a major lack of reference for this costume. I mean, I was like looking at like a Marvel mobile game that I don't even know the name of if, and like using like 240p screenshots, but I managed to put together a minifigure here that I'm pretty proud of despite some sections probably being slightly accurate on like the backs of the arms and like the sides of the legs I'm not gonna lie but I mean other than that I think it is all there and I'm really happy with it using all the metallic white and I painted on as much detail as I possibly could and if we go ahead and separate the minifigure and uh, you can see I've got the uh, again being very similar to Thor two separate uh, modified you know trimmed down to size and painted Cape Madness accessories and so this obviously goes on top of the main uh, waist cape and then you can see the uh, the entire waist cape itself is kind of similar 
similar to the style like in which I, I make Wonder Woman's waist capes. It kind of folds out like that and, and this is the part where uh, I forget how it goes on. Oh wait, there we go. I got it. There we go. Good. Um, but you can see just the wrap around there isn't much on the back because it all gets covered by the cape anyway. Um, and that that's pretty much sums it up. Did I show you what the design that that's on the legs? There it is again. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, so I think that is it for Valkyrie as I uh, make a, a obvious effort to stall as I reassemble the minifigure, but I'm really happy with the way this one turned out. I think finding this face uh, really topped off the minifigure and the hairpiece and everything I'm just really proud of. And also, I painted a design on the back that is on her cape in the movie. I don't know if I painted it right. I based it off of one picture and, and I mean, I, I tried. It's probably a little too big, but I mean, it, it is there. So that's it. Valkyrie did it. Done. And the final figure of the showcase, Hela, the goddess of death, played by none other than Kate Blanchett. I was looking forward to making this minifigure ever since I saw her costume. It just looked like it was going to be such a cool minifigure to make. And even before that, as far back as when Marvel put out the first bit of concept art for her initial arrival on Asgard, I looked at that helmet and I was just like, wow. Well, that's going to be one hell of a challenge for future Ross. And then, thankfully, Lego came out with one hell of a f incredibly awesome rubber helmet piece that is perfectly accurate to Hella's helmet and it well I mean it was it was mostly perfectly accurate I did have to cut the front of it out um, but other than that I was just like oh thank you God Lego made something really incredible for their uh, their own Hella minifigure that I was then able to modify and uh, paint up and implement onto my custom minifigure and it saved so much work and made for an overall better figure as well and so other than that the entire figure fully painted. I bet you couldn't have guessed it, but I'm really happy with the entire costume. Definitely had to play a bit of the process of selection, uh, more so around the legs, but other than that, like with the torso and the arms, I was able to fit most of it on in terms of the design and all of the metallic green lines, and it was just a really cool, you know, series of designs to paint onto the minifigure, um, and so yeah, all the design work does continue around uh, all four sides of the minifigure's legs, of course, and so there is that, but also the fully painted face the only fully painted face in this showcase and uh, I'm really happy with the way this face turned out I think it's one of the best faces I've done this year for sure and I think uh, it, you know I, a lot of you know what came down to getting this face correct was of course like the heavy uh, makeup around the eyes but also you know the the exact shape of the eyebrows the thinness of them and and then the the mouth and you know making sure the, that her lips were also a certain you know, thinness. It was all um, factored into getting the likeness to Cape Blanchett, and I'm really happy the way that turned out, and I think uh, overall it tops off the minifigure super well, but where are her weapons, her weird black swords and axes that she would just craft out of absolutely nothing? Well, I mean, I, I looked at those, and I, I, I was like, nah. That, that was the end of that. Um, but finally, at the end of the video, you're probably also wondering, where's the Grand Master? Where, where, where's, where's Scourge? Where's everyone else and their dog that was in the movie? I mean, I, I thought, I thought Jeff Goldblum was really great, um, but I, I, I don't think it warranted a figure. And then you also, a Scourge, I mean, Car that wasn't exactly, you know, the Carl Ur Urban's best performance, but he was fine. So, I mean, kind of a dry note to end the showcase, but that's it. We're done. Yeah, tell Wong we'll deal with this later. <clears throat> Thor, I seem to remember you saying- No, I know, leave promptly and everything, and your cameo was really cool and all, but I could actually really, really use your help. Asgard is dead. And it will be reborn in my image. Asgard is dead. Hella. We've come to bargain. Little monster. 
Okay, guys, there you go. That is it for the Thor Ragnarok Showcase. Thank you so much for sticking around for the whole thing. And if you enjoyed this showcase and maybe found yourself inspired to make your own minifigures from the movie, then be sure to let me know by dropping this video a like below and or your opinion on these figures or anything you like or dislike about them down in the comments. Seriously, guys, you and your feedback are all the reason that I continue to do this on a regular basis. And unfortunately, though, I do not sell my custom minifigures and I realize it is something that I do not mention enough, so I'm going to work toward changing that and maybe try to make an effort to actually mention that in every showcase rather than just every other one. So anyway, unfortunately, do not sell custom minifigures. These took so much work as it was that I, I just can't possibly repl replicate any of the work I do and that is how it has been since the beginning, unfortunately. So anyway, social media, Twitter, Bookface, Instagram is where you'll see all upcoming projects such as Justice League, The Last Jedi, and Infinity War previews. All of that stuff will be over there long before it's ever posted here. I think the first time everybody saw my, the previews for my Thor Ragnarok figures was like sometime late September. I mean, everybody gets to see the work I do and the figures that I'm working on, you know, way sooner than over here because obviously I, I don't have to have them finished to post a photo of them. So anyway, um, that's it for this video. Uh, Thor Ragnarok was a fantastic and super fun film. Unfortunately, they did not prioritize story at all, and it was just more so a fun time at the theater, and I, I can I can totally understand that it is a fantastic and, and super fun film, um, but just in terms of people who, you know, the, the rare few that really did enjoy the first Thor film really wasn't a satisfactory treatment of a lot of the characters. But other than that, still really love the film, still want to make these figures and I love the costumes and everything that I you know was able to replicate in minifigure form so with that note on that note I'm gonna go that's it I'll catch you guys later all right bye bye Stop him. Oh, I know how to motivate you. Have some Odin jump scares. Thor, now is not- <laughs> God, Thor himself. <laughs> Asgard is destroyed, but we're on our way to Earth. Hey, where's Fandral and Volsag? I haven't seen Hogan either. They're all dead. What? Hela killed all of them. And no one told me? They were my best friends! We've been a little busy. Well, what about Sif? Oh, honestly, I have no idea. Man! This is definitely a figure that exists. I think uh, that's it. We're done with the showcase. Bye.